Hey everybody, welcome to today's show. I hope everyone's doing good. We're gonna do a little bit of resin casting with some wood as well as some aluminum honeycomb. These are, I, I like to call them super hybrids. It's like the hybrid blank plus a little bit of extra. So it should be pretty fun. And this is even more special. So I'm gonna switch views real quick and show you what we got going on first um, in our little buckets here. So we got that and we got this. I should probably pull that closer, but all right. So we got a little bit of wood and a little bit of aluminum honeycomb. And I like to mess around with this. You just cut it into little, little bits, the, the honeycomb. And uh, it's pretty cool. Now this is some special wood though. Um, so for anybody that maybe is not, didn't know yet, I guess, didn't hear or um, does not know him. Uh, one of our Good friends, YouTuber, uh, an excellent maker, has passed away. Uh, this happened last week, Br uh, Braxton Worthlin. And uh, it was a big shock to everybody. He was young, uh, but he, he, he went to the doctor and, and found out that he had like stage four cancer. And within a month, he had passed away. And so not a very awesome thing at all. Um, he was actually a pretty good friend of mine. He actually, <clears throat> he actually lived down in Las Vegas. And so we were, we were pretty tight. We, you know, we knew each other pretty well. So unfortunately we lost Braxton. Um, I want to, I, I forgot to pull up a couple things here. So he, like I said, he had a YouTube channel and I, I encourage you guys to check out his channel. He was an awesome guy. Um, and so if you don't know who, who he was, uh, he was awesome. He, he, he made some pretty cool videos. He did amazing work. And he was just like one of the, the coolest humans on the planet. Like everybody, you know, <laughs> loved him. So unfortunately, um, that happened last week. Uh, let's see here. Let me, I'm sorry, I totally forgot to pull up the, the, the link to his YouTube channel. I wanted to put a link to that. Um, let's see here. So I'll put that in. I'll, I'll remember to put this in the... Uh, in the show notes as well for later, but that's that's his channel. So like I said, I encourage you to check it out. He did he was an amazing wood turner, but he also did other kinds of projects, and his videos were really cool. So uh, check out what he's got going on. Um, now, wh why this is special uh, wood? Uh, I, he actually sent this to me. Um, it's called it's it's actually like a bush, kind of like sagebrush or uh, you know just brush type type of uh, you know plant like a like a bush. Um, but it's called creosote and so he sent that down and i i had totally forgotten that i kind of stashed it away had a little bit left and i thought it'd be really cool to use that kind of in his honor let's say so that's what we're going to be doing today uh doing a little bit of resin casting hopefully braxton will be uh looking over our shoulder uh, like i said go and check out his channel and i also need to find I think I'm going to have to go back and uh, put this in the, the show notes because I'm not entirely sure. I, I should have done this beforehand, but um, there's also a GoFundMe uh, going on right now to help out his family. Like I said, this was totally unexpected. So uh, I think they've raised quite a bit of money so far, but they have a lot, a, a long ways to go. Um, so I will get that and put it down in the show notes. And I've been posting stuff about that on my social media. Um, so look for that there. Um, I might try and pull it up later, but I, we're going to kind of get going on, on the stream here, you know. Um, so the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to, I don't think I'm going to auction these because it takes a while. I think what I'm going to do is just kind of sell these for kind of a higher price and then donate the proceeds once I get the blanks cut up. I just thought that would be kind of a cool thing to do. Um, so uh, that's what's going on today. A little bit of bad news and all, but, you know, yeah, it was very tragic. Um, he and, and the thing is, like a ton of people in the community knew him, uh, you know, like just online, the maker community and all that stuff. Turning world, definitely. Um, he was always like that, you know, the first guy to kind of, you know, lend a hand, say hi, you know, teach you something that he knew. He was really good at wood turning and he actually taught me a lot about bowl turning. He uh, kind of was like almost like a tutor of Jimmy Clues. Um, Jimmy Clues lives in, in Las Vegas and Braxton and him were very close. So he learned a lot of stuff from him and he was active, like in the, especially in the Utah uh, wood turning symposium. He was like w very active in that kind of community thing and just all over the place. So he was a cool guy. So, hey, Yak Branson is here. What is happening, man? So anyway, 
So that's what we're going to be doing here. Um, like I said, and I'll try and pull up the, the information for the GoFundMe. I just need to pull it up in my, my email, I think. Um, so let's uh, talk about what happened last week. We made some blanks uh, using some kind of new to me uh, mica powders as well as some of the like macro shifts. And we got some really cool results, I think. Pretty excited about these things. The little macro pearls added just a little bit of sparkle in there and just really kind of cool looking blanks, I think. So these were the light ones. Um, and I think we had like four colors in each one, three or four. Um, so pretty cool. Uh, we used, let's see here. That actually kind of turned out pink. I think it was a red, but. Um, so, and then I really love these ones. These are super galaxy nebula looking kind of things to me. A lot of people kind of said they liked these ones. Um, but you can see the little sparkles going on and all that kind of cool stuff. So, oh, I stuck this in resin, I guess. <laughs> Whoops. Oopsies. We'll just clean that up. Actually, I think that might be acetone. So, and these are probably going to go into the... Um, into the box, I'm saving blanks that we make on the stream for um, mystery box blanks and stuff. So don't think that they're gonna be going up on my website, but we'll see, we'll see. All right, so yeah, yeah, uh, yep. Yeah, I don't know all the details and if I tried to explain all the details, I'd probably screw it up. But the, the kind of short story is uh, about a month ago, he went into the hospital uh, for something else. He didn't know what it was and got diagnosed with, I think it was kidney cancer, like stage four. And so it only took a month and he was gone. He actually, uh, he had complications also because he got pneumonia. And then it just kind of went south. So, yep, it was, it's, I was, it was, I, I was, I, to be honest, I'm still in shock. Like the whole thing was just nuts. Um, I didn't even know he was actually sick uh, at the time. So, Anyway, uh, so Banger Blanks is asking if they're uh, sanded or polished. All I do is I cut them on the table saw and then I just go to the buffing wheel and just kind of buff them with the Tripoli. Uh, you know, I just don't really have time to sit there and sand pen blanks when, <laughs> especially, I, I think the thing that aggravates me about that is then they're just going to be turned, right? So like all that work that I'm doing sanding is just kind of a waste. So I found that if you just, uh, and, and you have to have a pretty decent, like you can't have a really terrible edge. Uh, I have a pretty good table saw and I, and I get pretty decent cuts off my, with my blades. Um, definitely don't be using like an old blade, you know, uh, newer sharpened blades work a little better. But if you can get a pretty reasonably, you know, smooth cut on the blanks, then really all you got to do is just take them to the buffing me machine now it's not going to be as amazing like if you're really trying to you know get really awesome amazing pictures and all that kind of stuff then you might want to sand and do all that stuff but i find that buffing is good enough it, it works pretty good so let's see here all right so yeah it was a huge loss is there anything else that i need to oh there's one other thing that i wanted to mention so if you haven't seen the video of making the fabric bowl, I got that up and this was the project that I, that I used for the auction for the MS Society thing for Scott Wishart. Um, he rode 100 miles up uh, like, like through New Jersey on a bike and, and like he, he set this huge fundraiser up and he totally blew um, last year's, uh, you know, how much he collected for, from donations like totally out of the water. I think it's like, I want to say it was like 13,000 or 16,000, somewhere in that range that he, he uh, raised. Um, part of it, he just got donations, but then a bunch of makers made things and then auctioned them off. So if you didn't hear about that, um, I had an auction on Instagram and here's the, the piece. And there's a, a video up on my channel. If you want to go to like the, the homepage, it's one of those, you know, fabric bowl uh, video. Um, but this is going home and it's being sent out to the winner of the auction. And a lot of you guys probably know him, Doug, uh, from, uh, oh shoot, Fleetswood Shop. Um, that, that would be his logo. And so I'm going to, I totally free. I was like, Doug, at, uh, uh, don't you hate it when you do that? Fleetswood Shop. Um, so here's a link to his YouTube channel. He's got some really amazing uh, videos, actually. He does some, a bunch of, you know, totally different stuff, but he does do some resin casting stuff that's been amazing. So make sure to check him out over there on his channel. Give him a little bit of love, subscribe. Um, and I, I heard from Scott. So not only, so Doug won the, the, I did, last year I did the X-Wing Sphere with the little kind of burl base thing. 
And Doug paid a lot of money. His bid was ridiculous, like amazingly ridiculous. So uh, he did amazing last year. And then he won this year again. And, you know, another huge bid. And on top of it, he went even further and donated even more than the actual winning bid, I guess. That's what Scott told me. So he's an amazing human also. So make sure, like I said, go and give him some love. Subscribe to his channel as well. Uh, pretty cool stuff, though. So big thank you to Doug. I don't think Doug's in here today, but he pops in from time to time. Um, so anyway, pretty cool. Fleet's Wood, Fleet's Wood Shop. All right, so let's see here. Let me, you know what? Before we begin, we've been messing around already. So let me try to find, let me just try and find that link to the GoFundMe. I think I can get it really quick here. Here it is, actually. Okay, I got a link to it. Okay, so that wasn't that hard. Uh, a really long link. Hmm? Yeah, okay, that's, that's easier. Okay, so I got the link to that. So if anybody, like I said, if anybody wants to donate and help out the family, um, there's a link to that, the GoFundMe. Um, and, and like I said, once I get these blanks cut up, I'll probably put them up for sale. Um, I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do it, but if I don't just sell them to somebody, if somebody doesn't just buy them right, right away, um, like on Instagram or something like that, then I'll put them up on my website. So be looking for those. I'll let you guys know, you know, what, what all is going on. Resin Dragon. That's a cool, I like that, that screen name. Well, I, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. I'm glad that you're enjoying this stuff. All right, so let's do some casting. What do you guys think about that? So I moved the, I got to look at my screen here. I moved the camera back just a little bit. Yeah, that's still not any better necessarily. So I'm going to move it up to where it was. I, I thought maybe, maybe if I moved it back just a little bit, it'd be a little bit brighter, but it doesn't seem to be changing anything. So I'm going to move the camera back up in kind of more above. Uh, my new camera is coming today. Uh, unfortunately, like I was, if you didn't hear, so I'm, I'm getting a new camera and a new computer for the live streams and, uh, the camera's coming today. So I, I have that. And I, and I was saying that I was just going to, you know, go get a computer. Uh, what I'm, what I'm going to be using, I'm going to try out a, a, a Apple Mac, Mac M1 mini. Um, and so they have one out that should work, but I really think that they're going to be re uh, releasing new ones possibly. It's, it's very heavily rumored that they might come out uh, like in October, middle of October. And I just don't think I want to spend the money right now if the new ones come out that are supposed to be better. All right. So we're going to be kind of pushing that back just a little bit. But if they don't have an Apple event or they don't uh, launch those in October, then I'm just buying the, the old M1 Mini. So anyway, coming soon though, so hopefully I'll get my camera today and uh, that should be pretty fun. I think it's going to be a better picture. The problem is the computer that I have right now, the USB 3, and this is, gets all technical, but on the motherboard of my computer, the, the USB 3 thing that you connect into, the, one of the prongs fell off. So like I can't hook a, a, a higher speed cable up and actually get better results on this computer unless I replace the motherboard, which... Frankly, I don't want to use a, a Windows machine anyway, and I think the, the little Mac Mini should do the job now. So just an update on that. We're getting a new computer and a new camera. And uh, so hopefully I'll, we'll be kind of up, upgrading the, the picture a little bit. I'm going to work on, I'm probably going to have like a, a mount where, you know, and just make sure everything's really good. So everything just kind of works really well every time and, and, and kind of imp hopefully improve some of the shots and the angles and all that kind of stuff. That's what I'm hoping for, but mainly the picture. I'm hoping that it's it's a little bit it should pick up more light um it, it, like do better in like darker kind of situations stuff like that so should be pretty cool all right so let's see here let's switch to the canon view so first off let's do let's do the handle size kind of blank so again if you're just joining the fun what we got going on right now we got a little bit of creosote and that's like, like I said, it's like a bush. <laughs> it's not like a tree, um, like, you know, the tip your typical wood. It's more like sagebrush. If, I think that one, a lot of people probably know what that is more than creosote. But it's basically the same type of thing. It's like a bush. And so uh, Braxton sent some of this stuff down. And, uh, of course, we got aluminum honeycomb. This is the stuff that I sell. So I sell three sizes on my website just to let everybody know if you didn't know. Um, I'll just pull out some pieces here. So... 
Um, I sell a two inch thick, all right? So that would be good for handle blanks with a quarter inch cell. And then I have quarter inch and eighth inch cell in seven eighths thick. And these would be, uh, you know, for pin blanks and stuff. So just to let you know, that's what I, I sell it on my website. If anybody wants to snag some of that stuff, it's really fun to cast with. Um, but for, for the first one, let's do a handle blank. And I thought we'll just do a little honeycomb and then uh, a chunk of the wood. So of course, as, as we always do, super chat if you want to get in on some colors. I'm going off camera real quick. I'm just going to blow this out. There's a bunch of like wood dust stuff down in there that just doesn't need to be in the mold. So I just kind of blew that out. Now it's nice and clean. We're probably, that's really important if you're going to be going with like transparent or clear resin. We're most likely going to do colors in this, but um, still, you don't really want dust in there. It's not, you just don't need it, you know? Get the dust out of there. You just got a new camera and computer too? Sweet. Yeah, it is, man, I'm telling you. The new Mac computers, the new chips, I mean, just game changer for me. So I'm, I'm a pretty big Apple fan, and I got to be honest, I have been disappointed. My, my current laptop is what I use for editing videos, and I hate it. It's a piece of junk. And I was getting to the point where I was like, I may need to switch to a Windows machine because this thing's terrible. And then they came out with the new computers, and guess what? Now I can get an even cheaper one probably. So I'm even gonna replace my laptop as well. Uh, Cause I'm just, like I said, very, very disappointed with that thing. And it was a super expensive laptop. All right, so I got my gloves on. I'm gonna make sure we're widest angle here so you guys can see what's going on. Um, let's see here, no super chats. Okay, so we're gonna just roll into it. I'm gonna pick some colors. That's the wrong camera. There we go. Um, I'm gonna pull out. So for, for anybody that's kind of new to the scene here, I'm actually gonna pop this back in the oven. Um, so you can see on the camera there, I got my oven here. I like to warm all this stuff up. Um, one thing for, you know, if you're, if you're casting square molds, the corners tend to kind of round uh, a lot of times. And part of that has to do with, it's like a sharp corner. Um, you can see there's like gaps in my, my molds and stuff. Um, so um, not, you know, whatever. <laughs> Air can get through there and it's, it's basically the corners are cooler. All right, and so that the reason that you get that in a square mold like this with the sharp corners is the resin's tending to, to creep towards the, the warmest part, which is the center. All right, so just to let you guys know, it's not like the resin's like shrinking or, or doing some weird thing. It's just, it's, it's shrinking away from those colder corners. All right, so heating the mold up can kind of help out with that. Um, a lot of times if you just have a fully solid mold, that will kind of fix things. If you're using like a, a silicone mold, um, like the Jake's Blanks ones, um, you know, where you don't have any air, air gaps at all. It's, it's fully solid. A lot of times that can kind of help. Um, sometimes not, but um, either way, it's always good to heat up your molds, I think, especially silicone molds. All right, so for, for the newbies out there, oh my goodness. What's going on here? Am I out of room in my book? Am I on the last page? What's going on here? Oh, we filled the book up, guys. All right, so last page, I guess. Okay, so this is a little notebook, and I always write down notes on every casting that I do. So this is 929, and I think I heard a super chat. So let me stop. Two of them. Nice. Frank and Steve, thank you guys for the super chats. And we, so we got blue. Is there any special blue? And then we got blood red. Blood red from Steve, awesome. All right, so the date here. And then, so we're doing, uh, I, I, like I said, I, I just tend to call those, if I, if I have wood and like honeycomb, I call those super hybrids. It's just a thing that I came up with. A term that I coined for myself. Um, so number one, we're doing a handle blank, and I just call it a handle blank because that's the size of it. Like it's a block, two inch block. And the mold that I'm using is two inches by two inches by about six or six and a half, something like that. Um, that's, that's the mold that I use for, for these things. Um, so we're making a handle, we're using my handle, uh, two inch mold, and we're gonna be using Alumalite Clear Slow. 
All right, so that mold holds about, if I was just gonna try and fill the entire mold up, that holds, I think I wanna say 420 grams, maybe even a little bit more. Um, but obviously we got a pretty thick chunk of wood in here. That's a pretty gnarly chunk of wood right there. Plus uh, the honeycomb's probably not gonna take up a whole lot of room uh, in this one. Um, but you know, we got a little bit of, of you know, volume is gonna be removed because of that piece of wood. So um, let's just go with, Three, let's just go with 380 and kind of hope that that works. If you're going to just kind of wing it, like I, I'm usually pretty good at, at estimating things like this because I, you know, I do it a lot. But if you're not entirely certain, what I recommend is, is, is shoot, you know, overshoot, um, you know, either mix up the full amount that that mold holds or, you know, pretty close to it and then just have you know, a PVC pipe or, or something else handy that you can pour any excess resin in so you're not just wasting it. All right, so we'll see how, how we do here. Three, we'll try 380 grams. If it's a little low, that's not the worst case scenario. I think it'll be okay though. And we got two colors. So we got, we got blue, let's see here. Let me see if, if uh... ah, Dom's gonna pick the shade. Caster's Choice Brilliant Blue. And you guys picked some good colors right there. Brilliant. It is pretty brilliant. And then blood red, which is also a caster's choice color, which I sh should have. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't think I have any. Um, I'm out of the blood red, guys. I don't have any more to fill that. So uh, we're going to use wine red, which is very close from uh, P-Town Subby. That's very, it's an ex extremely close color. It's not the same, but it's pretty close. So we'll have to use that. So let's just go with, uh, yeah, that, I know that. So when you're dealing with these like kind of bush plant things like that, I mean, they're, they're just weird. And like the wood is all twisted and crazy. So they're pretty, pretty cool, pretty cool pieces. And that's kind of how I got started with resin casting is I wanted to cast sagebrush. So um, for anybody that doesn't know, I'm wearing the, so then I, I live in Nevada and, and the thing is Battleborn. And uh, that's like the, the state thing. That's what this shirt is. But um, I kind of wore this in honor of Braxton also because he's down in Vegas, uh, another Nevada boy. Uh, but, you know, I wanted to uh, cast sagebrush because sagebrush is the Nevada state flower, which it's completely ubiquitous. And there's most people think it's just like a terrible thing that <laughs> that's everywhere here, but it is the state flower. And so that's actually how I got into resin because I wanted to turn that. But it's not a very turnable wood. Uh, I'm going to wood. It's not really wood. It's like a bush. And so using the resin, you can use little chunks like this and, uh, and have the resin kind of fill in. And then you got yourself a nice turning block at the end that can, can be turned. Banger blanks with silvery gray. Nice. You know what's a good one for silvery gray is pewter or a.k.a. yakinum. <laughs> it's kind of an inside joke. You guys saw Yak Branson earlier. So he would always pick, uh, uh, shoot, what did he call it? Platinum. He would always pick platinum, and so I would always use this. So we just finally started calling this yakinum because back in the day over on Twitch when I started doing uh, doing live streams, that's what that's what happened there. And all right, so we got 380. Let's just divide this by three. So we got that's a pretty cool combo. A little bit of silver, red, and blue. I'm gonna cut off uh, super chats. Any other super chats that come in are gonna get in on the the pen blanks. Um, I think this is gonna be a really awesome color combo. So 380 divided by three is gonna be 127. Let's just go 130. That'll kind of also bring that total number up a little bit. It's just, I'm evening it out, it's close enough. That's, that's gonna be more like 390 is what we're gonna be actually doing there. Um, so number one, we got Brilliant Blue. Brill, learn how to spell, Brilliant Blue. Caster's Choice. And I'm gonna open this up and show you guys. So this is, I really like this color. It's one of my favorites. Really vibrant, brilliant blue. Good name for it. Okay, so we got brilliant blue. We got 
wine red, which I showed you. I'll just pop it again real quick. And this is the, the P-Town Subby. Um, it's a P-Town Subby brand. Very nice. And it's very similar to um, Steve's pick for Blood Red. It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's almost exactly the same. So that's why I chose that one. And then last but not least, we got a little bit of yak in them. And I just showed you that. Like I said, this is a very good, I really like this as a silver. Not a bad one. Um, which, to be honest, they probably, I don't know if they still sell this one. Shoot. Let me look real quick. That's, I gotta think about that. They've, uh, Lumalite's changed to, <coughs> excuse me, they've changed to a different, um, poly, they call it polycolor now. Uh, resin powder. They are still selling the Aluma dust stuff. I might have to double check with them and see if there is hmm. telling me 15% off. We got, they got silver, they got pewter. Okay. They, so I do think that they have pewter still, even in the new poly color. And they might even have some pewter left in, nope, they don't. They're out of it in, in the Illuma dust. They're closing that stuff out. So I do think that they might have the same thing in, in polycolor, just to let you guys know. Wanted to double check that. Okay, so we got that. So what I'm gonna do here, let's put in like half teaspoon in each one that that's that'll make it nice and dark um there's two different ways you can go with this um you can you know you can load it up a little bit and if you're doing like something that's going to be like a handle or something thick uh, you don't really need to put as much powder in i mean realistically I, I'm, I'm actually going to drop this we only need a quarter teaspoon to make it you know pretty rich but on the other hand you can also just do kind of very light amounts and, and you'll get a lot more trans light transmission through it so i don't know I, either way let's just go with a quarter teaspoon of each one of these guys see how that turns out okay so we got our formula ready let me get some cups going here Uh, let's see, 380, 390, okay. Okay, let me go get a cup. Ooh, who wants to see the cup get popped out? We'll go to this view. Ooh, fun. Oh, it was a good one. Now you could save these. One thing that I will say is this is very smooth. So it may, you may have a little bit of difficulty with adhesion if you were gonna recast something like this. Um, I usually don't recast things like that, but I got kind of enough things to cast usually, but it is fun to pop them out of the cups. <laughs> so uh, just to let you guys know, it, to do that, so I'm gonna use this as a mixing cup, right? And what you wanna do is just set this aside. When you're done, you know, you've poured, put it aside, let that resin completely cure. And this is one of those paint mixing cups, you know. Um, let it cure in there totally, and then you can just, you know, squeeze it, pop it out, and then you're ready to go. Uh, the one thing that I will say is sometimes you can get some little kinda little chunky, you know, little bits of resin on the inside. If that's the case, and if you're going for a clear uh, pour and it needs to not have little floating things in it, then don't use, reuse a cup for that. Um, but you can kind of clean the edges with like a ruler or some, you know, straight edge of some sort. Uh, but that's how you do that and, and you can reuse the cups. Now these things are not reusable. These, you can't pop the resin out, it'll stick to it. So um, paint mixing cups are a good way to go. I like both for different reasons. All right, so let's see here. Zeroed the scale out. We're going with, um, I'm gonna, 
I know that it's kind of a weird view, but it's just, I don't want to forget. I know my arm's just going to be in the way on the camera, but um, so 195 times two. So we're using Illumilite Clear Slow. It's a urethane resin and it is a one-to-one -one by weight. So if you make sure to read the instructions on your resin, even if you think you know what you got, just double check the instructions on the jug. Um, because some of them are going to be by weight, some of them by volume. And if it's by volume, then you need to put like equal parts, you know, um, one to one or, you know, whatever um, in ounces. So like, you know, eight ounces of each piece if it's one to one by volume. With this, it's you use a scale, it's by weight. And so I kind of prefer the, the scale thing. It just is, I don't know, it's just dead on. You know exactly when you got half of it, you know. So we need 195, but either way, they both work fine. It doesn't matter. But if you do, if you're using, so like for instance, amazing clear cast, same, it's also, and this is one of the big reasons why I always say, read the directions, read the jug, because a lot of people just assume, or, or, or they think that Illumilite is like one resin or something like that. Um, Illumilite sells probably 50 different resins, right? And so they'll buy this stuff, they'll pick it up at Michael's thinking it's what I use because it says Illumilite on it. This stuff is by volume though. And so it says, you know, mix ratio, one to one by volume. If you try and do this by weight, one to one, it ain't gonna work. It's gonna throw off the mix ratio. So just to let you guys know, that is like one of the biggest issues that people run into when, when people have like an issue a problem and they're like oh it didn't cure and then i'm like well did you read the directions <laughs> you know and so just to let you guys know uh, always do that make sure you know what you got all right so zeroed that out we got our part a equal part of part b here my keyboard and junk out of the way come on okay Alex, uh, no, not a whole lot exciting necessarily going on here. Oh, Ian, that's, oh, okay, what's up, man? Oh, I went a little too far, so I went to 200. I need to add a little bit. I was, I was reading. That's what I get for reading the chat. Welcome, Ian. I'm just evening that back up. Need to add about five grams. All right, close enough. Zero that. Uh, actually, I don't need to zero it, but I do need a, a stir stick here. So again, we're doing three colors. I'm just going to mix it all. There's different ways you can do this. If you're really short on time, um, then in some cases it may work better to do three different cups. Um, and then put, you know, put part A and part B in each one, and, but you can put each one of your colors in each one of your cups and get everything prepared. Or you could even, you know, mix in the color to the part A only, or, you know, part B, one, one part or the other, whichever one you put in there first. And uh, get that kind of mixed in and then add your part B to each one. So there's different ways of doing things. I think most people probably prefer just, you know, sticking the whole thing in one cup and then dumping off, you know, equal parts or whatever. And you can even weigh it out and do all that. I'll probably weigh out the first cup and then just kind of eyeball it. Um, it doesn't really matter if I get it perfect with these powders. It's not going to affect anything. If you're trying to get very specific dye recipe colors and all this stuff, then you're probably going to really want to make sure that you've put, you know, specific amounts of resin in there. Otherwise, it can kind of throw things off a little bit depending on what you're doing. All right, so we're mixing it up. Make sure to scrape the sides and the bottom. Ed's here, what's up, man? You've been lurking around, said, I, did you hear? I, I, so last week I was like, uh, I'm just gonna buy the M1 Mac Mini, I'm done. Or <laughs> one of the, one, last week or the week before. And now I've changed my mind again, but I do have the camera coming for the new stream setup. 
Um, I decided, I saw, you know, there's all these people that are doing all these Apple, you know, leaks and rumor things that, of stuff that's coming out. And I saw one of those and they're like, oh, the October 12th, I, I think they're going to have Mac, you know, the, the new Mac minis coming out. And I'm like, ah, so I just, I don't want to buy a, an M1 and then they come out with the new ones that are better in like two weeks. All right, so I'm pouring 130 grams in here. Ed and I have been talking about computers and buying new Macs for a while. That's why I, I, if anybody's like, why, why are you talking about this again? We've been talking about it. All right, so, and then I'm just going to put a, you know, pretty close to the same amount in there. Pretty close. I might have gone a little over. That's okay. No big deal. All right, so let's put our wine red in here. We're going to go with a quarter teaspoon. That's what I wrote down. Sweet. Another super chat. So you'll be in on the next one. Thank you for super chatting. I appreciate it. All right, so this is a, a little teaspoon thing. I just like to use these. You could probably just go with like, I don't know. If, if you're not going for very specific things and you don't necessarily need these things, I just kind of like it. A lot of times I'll mix up custom things. And so it's nice to, you know, actually have an amount. Somebody asked me, I think it might've been Dominic, why don't, why I don't weigh the powders out? Cause I, I weigh dyes out if I'm going for custom colors like that. And I, I don't know exactly. I, I think that one thing is I'm going to have to scoop it out of there anyway. So this just made sense to me, but I also think that it just doesn't weigh that much. And so in some cases you would have to have a super, you know, low, uh, a scale that, that's like super sensitive, which I have a pretty sensitive one, but I don't know. In some cases, I think it'd be just too, too little weight to make it worth it. So I prefer just scooping it like that. I um, mean, you can get a set of those little mixing spoons like at the dollar store, frankly. Um, or Amazon's got cheap ones. They work pretty good. But if, if you're not, if it's not, a lot of times, if you're just putting one color in, you're not going for like, you know, special colors, then you really don't necessarily need to do this kind of thing. You can kind of just wing it, go with like, you know, just scoop it out with a stick. And you should be okay in most cases. Okay, so that's looking good. Let's put a quarter teaspoon of the blue. Depends on how... Now, I prefer, if I'm going to do anything, I'd rather be more accurate every time. You know, somewhat more accurate. So that's kind of why I typically lean towards these things. Like, I take notes, I measure things out. That way, you can always get repeatable results. And a lot of times, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit anal about certain things because, uh, for instance, let's just say... Um, like I probably could have got away with just mixing up the resin, even though I put a little extra part B in there, um, and just said, oh, it's close enough. But the problem is if you run into an issue with your casting after the fact, then that could be a reason why that happened, but you don't really know. So that's one of the reasons why, you know, trying to be as accurate as possible, you know, make sh making sure things are super dried out if you're going to be casting them. Um, you know, putting things in the oven, flashing off uh, surface moisture, little things like that. The more things you can eliminate that could cause a problem, the easier it is to diagnose a problem if it does happen. All right, so that's kind of why I do certain things. Uh, one thing to mention, I was just talking about, you know, drying wood out. So that, that wood has been stabilized uh, fully. So I, Braxton sent that stuff to me like years ago. I saved a little bit. I already made some some stuff. I think actually I made a blank for him. That's why he sent it down. I can't remember what he made now. A pen or something. Um, and so anyway, I cast some of it up and I saved a little bit. And so now I'm kind of glad I did that. All right. So stir, stir, stir. <laughs> it makes you feel so fine. I know. It does. All right, so that's looking pretty snazzy. It's a pretty, it's a nice bright blue. I like that. And then this, like I said, that's a pretty good silver. I like, I really like this one. It's one of my favorites out of, there's a lot of silvers, it seems like. 
And that one seems to be one of my favorites, typically. A little bit of wine red. All right, so we are going to be doing kind of a, a you know, a swirling color thing. Um, now, I'm going to, I'm checking the temperature. So the temperature is pretty low in the shop. It, the, the temperature cooled down um, just the last, like, three, three days or so. So um, the temperature right now is 73 degrees in the shop. So it's going to take a little longer for this to, to get to the point where it's ready to, to, to pour. Um, for anybody that doesn't know, if you're going to be trying to like, you know, mix colors together and mar get marbled, you know, look, um, if you just mixed it up and then poured it all, especially, this is especially important if you're like talking a, a 45 minute working time resin or something like that, like, you know, amazing clear cast or, you know, many epoxies or 30 to 40 minutes long. If you just mixed it up and then dumped it all together, it's going to literally just all blend together because it's just going to be sitting in there moving around. Um, so you wait till the end of the working time when it starts to kind of thicken up. And then you pour your colors and it's, they stay together. Plus, the other thing about it is if, you're, if you've waited till the end of the working time, that means that it's going to change from liquid to solid soon. So it's not just sitting there kind of, you know, floating around and, and intermixing. But it also has to do with that viscosity. You want that viscosity to kind of get thick. Then those colors don't bleed and everything kind of gets locked into place. It gets a little bit harder if you're not just dumping resin into a trough like I'm doing. Somebody was just talking about uh, um, they make wands and they wanted to make a silicone mold. And it, it's a little bit tougher in that, in that instance if you're doing multiple colors because, you know, you're going to take it out of the mold and all you're going to see is the outsides, right? So you got to make sure that you're getting the, the mold has multiple different colors. And so one way that you could do that is actually, they call it a, a dirty pour, where you'd basically just pour all of your colors into one cup and then pour it in there. That would be one way to do it. It's, it's hard to, to, you know, you, you can't get very uh, um, repeatable results necessarily. It's gonna be totally different every time, but but it is a way to do it. So we're at about 98 degrees. Um, usually you can pour around like with Alumilite clear slow. So this is going to change depending on the resin you're using, but usually somewhere above 95 is going to be a pretty good temperature. All right. So one thing that I recommend if you're going to be casting alum uh, or aluminum honeycomb is to take out, especially this, this deep one, take it out of there and then put it down in later. Um, that way you're not trapping air bubbles. Um, I just, I, I think that's a better way to go. So that's, that's the way that I do it. You can try and see if you can just fill those things, the cells doing it, pouring it on top. But I think you're going to get more trapped air doing that. Now it is going to disrupt, you know, kind of mix up your colors a little bit because you're pressing it down in there. But at the same time, I've never really had that be a problem. It still looks good. So the temperature was around 100. I think that we were pretty good. I could have maybe waited a little bit longer. Might get a little bit of bleeding, you know, here and there, but I think we'll be okay. Sometimes a little color bleed actually looks kind of good. It can kind of turn, you know, we're doing three colors. We're doing a three color pour here. It can kind of turn a three color pour into four or five, you know? So where it doesn't work out too well. Um, so like for instance, if you wanted to pour Michigan Wolverines themed blanks. So they're, they're like a kind of dark blue and like a yellow. If you're trying to do that and the colors bleed, then you're going to get green. And uh, the rival team, Michigan State, <laughs> their colors are green. So that's, that's a case where you really don't want color bleed, right? But if you're just mixing a bunch of colors up, eh, whatever. Not that big of a deal, really. Probably not going to ruin anything. I think that I did pretty good on estimating how much resin. Well, that's good. 
And then what I do is we just let that slide on down. And that way there's no way that you're, you're trapping air. You're pushing the air up through the cells, right? Kind of tap that down. Okay, so that's all the way down. So it'll be a little less than two inches. That's okay, no big deal. Okay, and that's all you gotta do. That's it. So we're gonna put it in the pressure pot. You can see on that bottom little camera there, dropping it in. I have CA Technologies pressure pots. They're good to, they can handle up to 80 PSI. Um, so I go, to, I go to 70 in these. Uh, as long as you're over like 45 or so, 40, 45, that's kind of the minimum that I would go. Uh, just keep in mind, these things are kind of tough to keep like totally, you know, leak proof, totally sealed. Um, so if you got a, a resin that, that takes like eight hours or more to cure, then, you know, that's one of the reasons why I like going higher is I have a little bit of room, um, even if I had a little bit of a leak, um, and I was using a slow setting resin, um, it's not gonna drop below the minimum bar. Because if it drops below that, then the, the bubbles start growing back. So, I like to go, if you, if you got like a Harbor Freight, usually the cheap ones, I, if you go to about 50 PSI, you should be good. As long as that thing isn't leaking like a sieve, you should be good to go. All right. True blue Wolverine fan, yeah. yeah you don't want to. You don't want your color blank because that's. I mean, I sell team color blanks, and everybody's like, "Why don't you sell Michigan?" Oh, that's not the right thing. They're like, "Why don't you have Michigan blanks? What do you have against Michigan?" And I'm like, "Nothing." Uh, frankly, my one of my buddies went to school there, so I actually we're we're Michigan fans too. And but the problem was uh, the resin that I used for these things and, and like any of them, I, I wanted, you know, many of you guys know my blanks are like dyed blanks. So they're like, I'm trying to mimic the colors of like, you know, like the football uniform or something like that, um, which is more like a kind of a matte color, not, not, you know, pearls and stuff. And so the problem is with dyes, blue and yellow is like the worst for, for color bleed, like no matter what I would do it would bleed. And so I was just like, I give up. I'm not selling Wolverine's blanks that are green. Cause that's just, that ain't cool at all. Oh, oh my goodness. I'm okay. What am I doing? I'm trying to clean the bottom off of this thing. I'm throwing it all over the place. Okay. So, and then, like I said, I just set that behind me up on the, the little counter there and let it just cure and then you can pop it out crinkle it and it's real fun you if, if you haven't done it before uh you're gonna like it and let me know how you how it goes because it's super fun all right so here's the other one we're gonna do some pen blanks and i think there i think i saw yeah we got a super chat and let's see i can't why is this thing how much <laughs> youtube sometimes youtube Let's see. I'm just going to scroll up here. It was There it is. Okay, so did you did you say what color you wanted? I don't think you said what color. Hmm. Daryl's just joining the fun. All right. So let me let me switch camera views here. So we're we're casting some Aluminum, aluminum honeycomb and some, some creosote wood uh, that my buddy Braxton sent down uh, many years ago and he recently passed away. So it's kind of a special deal. Uh, but I like doing these things. They're, I call them super hybrids because like hybrids are just wood and resin. So these are, you know, super. So anyway, so uh, we're just kind of tossing some little chunks of, of honeycomb in there. Uh, and again, I sell these guys. So we got, you know, a few different sizes. We just did one that was like a handle blank. And so I had a, a I have two inch thick with quarter inch cell that I sell and then eighth inch and quarter inch in the seven eighths for pen blanks. All right. So, and I, all I'm doing, I like to just cut these things up a lot of times and just kind of toss them in. Um, it's kind of fun to just, you know, do it like this, I think. There, kind of fit it like that. You can put it in at different angles or all flat. It doesn't really matter. Now, in this case, I might kind of 
you know, if, if, if you, if the thing isn't sitting, I just got done saying, you know, I like to push it down in. Um, but if it's not sitting all the way to, to the bottom, if they're all kind of, you know, crooked like that, then if you pour down and let the resin fill up, it's doing the same thing as what I did, you know, as, as like shoving it down in. So it's kind of not a bad way to go, kind of propping these guys up, and then you don't even have to worry about any of that stuff. All right, so we're going to pop this into the oven. That's looking pretty sweet. So we got one super chat and then I'll, so if anybody wants to get in on the color choices, you can super chat. And uh oh, we got two of them, jade or emerald green, nice. Uh, let's see here. I think that's, I think that's Michael. I'm gonna cheat, I'm gonna look up. I think it's Michael. Oh, I heard another one, I think. I'm going to cheat. I'm cheating. Yeah, Michael. That's what I thought. I just, I didn't want to say that without knowing it for sure. Michael super chatted. And I'm not sure. I don't think he said what color he wanted. So let me know if you're still watching what color you want. So jade or emerald green. Let's see. And are you you wanted the? Um, I'm guessing yeah. So I'm guessing the. Uh, we got a couple emerald greens. So I got that. That there's the new emerald from. I don't know what a. Do I have a jade? I don't think I have a jade. I've got. Let's see. I think there's a jade green from, yeah, so there's, I have a dye that's jade green. I don't think I have any pearls, um, but we got a couple of emerald greens here. There it is. We got the eye candy emerald. That's the one that I use in those Christmas blanks. I don't know if that, Camera's really showing you what it should look like. It's a little bit kind of a mintier green, I would say. And then emerald green from Caster's Choice is kind of, I think, what a lot of people are typically. This is that's a very popular one. I do like the the eye candy one too. That it, I actually like this color better. I think in those Christmas blanks, it really made it pop. And then I got a a divine pigment jade green. So you just let me know which one. Yeah, the beetle blue. Look, that it was neat. Pretty interesting that the beetle blue. Is that what did we use that in? Is that what the green is in these these ones? I don't even know what's happening. What did we use that on? Blue. Hold on, I'm going to go to back. See, this is why I have a notebook. <laughs> uh, that, that's not what I want. Let's see, what do we do here? Black pearl. Violet sky blue. No, I'm on that one. Beetle blue. Okay, so the beetle blue is in the, the lighter colored blanks. So that's kind of the darker color in these. Unfortunately, there's not a huge, I don't have like a, a really big area, but it is it is a pretty nice blue. It's pretty dark. In the cup, it like tra changed colors though. It was like green and blue. So I don't know. I'll have to kind of play with that one, see what's going on with it. Just kind of looking dark in these blanks, though. All right, so let me get some gloves on. 
Whoa. So many subscribers. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. So I don't know if, uh, if Michael's around here. There he is. Okay, there he is. Blue. All right. What kind of blue? <laughs> I know, it's tough. Um, is that why... Yeah, it's like green, kind of greenish blue. Um, hmm, we got a lot of blues. We got a couple blue dyes as well over here. We got that metallic blue too from uh, from Divine Liquid Metal Blue. It's got kind of sparkles in it, but it's a dye. And we got a little bit of powder blue. We got some lagoon blue. So lots of different kind of dye colors that we can make. And then, you know, pretty much every kind of blue you can think of. So do you want like a dark? Do you want pearl? Do you want light? Do you want dye? I know it's tough. All these, all these questions. Uh, the other, actually, let's see here. Actually, Ed also picked emerald green. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, I don't know why that didn't show that originally, Bonnie. Let's see. Let me let me scroll up here. I don't know what what we're doing here. So banger blanks. Make, uh, which which one do you want? Do you want the eye candy or do you want Caster's Choice? Because he picked emerald green. Let's just go with the blue. That, that'll be that'll work. Or anything else you want. While we're waiting, I'm going to start writing down some notes. Mm. Okay, that's why I have this little cardboard thing. All right, so number two, we're doing ten blanks. Okay, so and then I that that mold, it's the same size as I, I call it my six blank mold. It, it'll give me six pen blanks out of there. Six blank mold, and then we're using slow set clear again. Lumilite clear slow, I guess is the technical name there. All right, so, and that mold holds about four, uh, 540 grams or so, 550, to fill it about an inch thick or so. And then um, we got a few, you know, chunks of wood in there. So let's just go with... Um, Let's just go with five, uh, four, 480. I think that should maybe work. And let's see, right now we got two colors. We got green and, and maybe blue. I'm not sure. Nobody's, nobody's responding now. <laughs> maybe we should just go with one color and, and go with blue green. <laughs> Well, emerald green is definitely getting in there. So uh, let's see here. So let's go with, let's just call it three colors again. Uh, and I'll pick one if we don't get another super chat. Let's see. So 480 divided by three. Okay, so 160 in each one. Okay, so we got emerald green, still waiting on which exact one. My thing frozen? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, re, I'm gonna refresh my page because maybe I'm not seeing the chat correctly here. Nope. 
Am I streaming? Am I live, guys? <laughs> Is anybody out there? <laughs> I'm going to get a drink. Mmm. Bonnie's still here, so it looks like I'm still live. So, uh, Michael and Ed, uh, let us know which colors you want. So, Ed picked emerald green already, so do you want the um, eye candy? Or do you want the caster's choice? All right, so that's the big question on green. And then blue, if you still want that, Michael, let me know. Yak's here. <laughs> Bill Swenson, what's up, man? Bill's coming over in a little bit. We are all eating ice cream. Eye candy, okay. Whew, that was tough. <laughs> and then if Michael's still here, Jeff's in for gold. Oh, for the gold. All right, so which gold do you want? We got golden rod. We got Olympic gold. We got regular, I just call it regular gold from Illumilite. We got... Is there any other good golds? Good gold. Oh, tug of war challenge. I, I hear you. Ice cream. <laughs> I think I'm behind. That's fun. I could go for some ice cream. Oh man, I totally indulged. I've been trying to eat good lately. I'm on kind of a little bit of a diet. I've just been, you know, if you start, um, for anybody that's actually like tracked your calories and stuff like that, like it's mind boggling. If you have never done that before, you'll be like, and, and if you really track every little bit, like ketchup and, and all, you know, every oils and butter and like weigh everything out, it is mind boggling how many calories you shove in your mouth every day for at least I, it was for me. And for, I think it is for most people. So I've just been trying to eat kind of healthy, you know, but um, I totally blew it out of the water. It was my mom's birthday and we went to Italian. I had like spaghetti with meats or spaghetti with sauce. And then uh, like the dinner portion, the actual dinner was chicken parmigiana with like, you know, covered in sauce and cheese and, and fried breaded. And then, um, and then I, well, that wasn't enough for me. I, I did get a bowl of broccoli, so that was healthy. But uh, And then I also had a dessert and I usually don't have desserts, but I'm like, ah, it's my mom's birthday. I'm not going to worry. I got, I, I don't even know what this thing was, but it was like a Snickers pie thing. Oh man, I didn't, I was like, I'm not even counting calories today. This is just not worth it. Coffee, regular gold. It is a really good color. I like that one. Um, I do like Olympic gold. That's, I'm, and actually golden rod's pretty, pretty darn good. It's a little bit more like kind of yellowish. Um, actually another, another one that's pretty good. I forgot about is the antique gold from caster's choice or it's the same um from p uh from uh wine wine country what do they call theirs royal gold i think it's the only gold they have all right so we got two definites i think i'm just gonna go with let's go with um let's see here let's go with the metallic sparkly one for blue since we aren't hearing back from michael That'll be kind of fun. Why not? We'll give it a whirl. We'll give it a whirl. And I'll try and keep my eyes out to see if he comes back and says, No! I wanted the other blue, darn it. That always happens. Okay, so we got emerald green, uh, and that's eye candy. We got gold from Illumilite. And so this is, again, another one of those things where this is Illumidust is what I'm using, but... Their polycolor, we've already figured this one out, the yellow gold from their polycolor. And I'm really not enthused about them selling it in bags now, but I understand because these, these jars are expensive. But yellow gold is, I'm telling you, I'm pretty sure it's exactly the same color um, as this one. So I'm just trying to like make sure, you know, if, if, if you've been used to using Aluma dust, I'm trying to make sure that I know what the, the alternatives are. Okay, so gold Illumidust, and then we got, um, oh, there he is. I know, we already had emerald green. <laughs> You're killing me. <laughs> we already had, Ed picked emerald green before you. Sorry about that. 
So uh, if you want a different blue, I, I just went with, I, I, I have this metallic, it's like liquid metal. Um, if, for anybody that hasn't tried these out, the Divine Pigments liquid metals, they're pretty, pretty cool. They're like sparkly dyes. So they kind of, I don't know, probably added macro pearl to dye and, and they came up with these things. So that's what I picked because you weren't responding. But if you want a different um, powder or dye, try to be specific and let me know if you want, you know, powder, dye, or lighter blue or whatever. I, I'm not doing anything, so I'll switch the cameras in a sec. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I guess if you want to see me writing, I can do that. But not a whole lot going on here. Oh, I see. I, I was showing you this. So, liquid metal from Divine. And regular gold Illumidus. Sorry about that. I'll just leave it on. I'm going to leave it on this one. Okay. Yeah, but Sorba is not ice cream. <laughs> so, <laughs> unfortunately. It's not bad. There's nothing wrong with it. But if you want ice cream, sorbet doesn't really fill that, that need. All right, so emerald green we're going to go with. So these are pen blanks. And the difference here is, uh, I was saying on the last one, if you're going to be, you know, if the final product is going to be have some thickness to it, like an inch, inch and a half, like a, like a handle blank like that, um, you don't necessarily need to put as much dot, uh, or powder in there to get a, you know, to make it look, you know, pearly. If you're doing pen blanks though, because most people are going to drill out the center and, and then by the time you've turned it down, it is like super thin, you know, the size of a pen blank um, when it's done, you know, finished turning. And so the thing is you need to add a lot more um, powder, otherwise it's just going to be totally transparent and just kind of have like a tint to it because there's just not that much actual powder per like square inch left. All right. <laughs> you want ice cream too? I know, I'm telling you I love ice cream, oh God. For anybody that, um, Curtis is here, what's up man? Uh, for anybody that doesn't, has never tried Tillamook, so if, and I don't know, some people may not be familiar with this, but Tillamook. Oh, I'm doing Tillamook. Type in the thing, I'm gonna type it out, Tillamook. Tillamook, that's a brand of, they make the best cheddar cheese um, that you can buy in like in a store. Um, but they, they also sell ice cream. Oh my God, it is the best ice cream on the planet. So. Butterscotch topping, oh man, you're killing us, Frank. You're killing us. Okay, and I'm, I'm, we're gonna go with liquid metal here. I, th I just, I can't, I can't, I got things to do here. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm sorry. We're going with the, the Divine Pigments. Liquid Metal Blue. All right. And let's see here. So this, uh, so for a dye, I like, again, I like to weigh those out on the scale. Um, and I like to do it based on like a percentage. Um, so, and I kind of do it a weird way. I'm not even going to tell you what the percentage is. I'm just going to tell you that there's going to be 160 grams in the cup. I'm putting two grams in of the liquid stuff. Okay, so whatever, however you want to figure it out. I factor things based on half the, the amount of resin. Um, so... I'm just gonna tell you how much I'm putting in there. So for the, the dusts, the, the powders though, I'm gonna go with, um, let's, let's really load these up. So the gold, you don't, this is actually a, a one that you don't necessarily need a whole lot, but let's just put three quarter teaspoon. Let's see, 80, yeah. That's gonna be very, it's gonna be very loaded up. So I, I wanna make sure these are nice and loaded. Three quarter teaspoon of each of those colors. Let's get rolling here, guys. Let's do this. Okay. Move that. Oh, I just smushed some resin. Smushed it. I clean that off. Otherwise, I get little bumps on the bottom of this thing. And you guys know how much I love resin spills all over the place. Sticky Fingers Club. Okay, 
So we got that, we got that. Let's get some cups. So it's gonna be 240 times two. 240. Uh, I'm gonna need to get a big cup. One of my favorites is pralines and cream from Baskin Robbins. And they actually sell that in the little pints at the, at the supermarket now. That is exciting news, guys. We saw that we were trying to get, um, actually one ice cream that saves a few calories if you're like really kind of like, you know, trying to save some calories here and there, is, uh, shoot, dryers. Oh, what the heck is that stuff called? It's like a specific thing. Slow churned, dryers slow churned ice cream. It has like a little bit less calories in it. And it tastes fabulous. So they had one that was um, Reese's peanut butter cup, but they didn't have it at the store. Like they, I saw it online. They didn't have it at the store. So I ended up getting um, some pralines and cream. And then we also got a Tillamook. One of the best Tillamook flavors that I, I think personally is um, they have one called Marion Berry Pie, and it literally tastes like pie with ice cream. It's so good. Oh, my God. All right, so enough ice cream talk. Zero. Uh, we need 240 grams of Part A. Two thirty. <laughs> I know, I know. Talking about food. Sorry about that. You know what's really good, I, and I think it's healthy. A little bit of barbecue, as long as you don't smother it in sauce. It's a little bit more on the healthy side. It's better than ice cream. That's that's for sure. There's no arguing that one. All right, let's see where we're at here. Need 10 more grams. Uh-oh, we got a late addition. If you want a color, you better get in quick. But I appreciate it, Daryl, thank you. You're gonna have to let me know in like three seconds. I'm going to start mixing and then it's, I'm not going to, there's no way. Ooh, Reese's ice cream. Yeah. Okay. So 240. I'm going to start mixing this up and I, I think I can, I can, I'll just divide two colors cups. I'll be able to get it in if you get it in quick. Ooh, peaches and strawberries. That's, that sounds yummy. Blue bunny. Nice. I haven't tried blue bunny. Actually, for healthy food, and this is probably going to sound absolutely disgusting, and, and trust me, if I heard some random dude on, a, on YouTube tell me this, I'd be like, you're gross, man. But it is actually really pretty darn good. So for a pizza crust alternative, they, they actually sell these ones, and I, don't, I don't have no clue what the, the name of the brand is. It's literally made out of chicken. Literally made out of chicken, the, the like crust. And so you, it'll be like a thin crust kind of thing. But it's pretty darn good. So then all you're, you know, worried about is like your cheese, you know, but you can like load up with a bunch of different toppings. Uh, I will say that these, these pizza, chicken pizza crusts, and they're very thin. Um, they taste fabulous. And you wouldn't know, like if you, if somebody shoved that in front of you, you wouldn't be like, oh, that's chicken. That's weird. It tastes like pizza. You can kind of crisp it up a little bit, but the things are super expensive. So just to, just to let you know. Blue metal flake. Uh, okay, I think I got some of that. I think we got some of that. And Curtis, if Curtis wants a color, we can we can do it. 
We can do it. Oh yeah, I do have a blue metal flake. Look at that. Look at that. I just happened to, you know, if you would have said like red metal flake, that might have been a problem. I literally, oh, lost some glitter. Just to let everybody know, metal flake is really pretty much glitter. In fact, that's, that's what it is. All right, so we got this thing mixed up here. I'm going to need some more cups. Let's see. So let me just see what 480 divided by, I guess, 20. All right, so four cups of 120. Actually, it's going to be five now, isn't it? 480 divided by five. Well, we're looking at like about 100 grams. Four. Okay, so, all right, so we're going to have to shut it off now. Anybody that super chats is not going to get a color, sorry. You got to get going. All right, so about there. I'm just going to kind of evenly do this. Now, if you're changing things in the middle of your, your pores and stuff, it makes it kind of difficult to take notes. Just to let you know. You're going to have to go back probably to do the note, update them. No problem though. Luckily, I got it on video. All right, so let's, uh, let's just put like, I'm going to put like a teaspoon of this metal flake in. This is a half teaspoon thing that I got here, so we're just going to load this up. I have no clue what this is going to do, but... Should work. Probably going to be kind of tough to keep that like totally separated from other things, you know. We'll have to kind of see how this works with in conjunction. I have done it before, um, not with five colors though. I actually made FedEx themed blanks. Somebody worked at FedEx. Okay, so we got that one. Let's go with we, now we can switch this to like half teaspoons. That'll be plenty. All right, so a quarter and a quarter is a half. Play them on camera, yeah. Some gold metal flake. I don't have gold metal flake. Um, that is one that I definitely do not have anything like that. Sorry. Green, we got gold. One, two, and then I was going to put, let's see here. Oh, yeah. I'm going to put about, let's see, so we got less resin now, so I'm going to be putting, whoa, there we go, we're going to be putting 1.5 now. One point five grams of this stuff. Gummy bear, yeah, actually, gummy bears. I do that actually at the the frozen yogurt place. <laughs> one point five. You can still pick a color, but I just I don't have the gold one. Gold, gold uh, flake. We already have a gold. These are going to be wild, guys. We got all kinds of things going on. We got metal flake in here. We got a, a liquid metal, liquid whatever. What do they call this? Liquid metal blue divine pigment. Oh, I'm spilling it. 
getting a little excited. And we got, what else we got? We got um, Blue Metal Flake. We got Emerald Green from, uh, from Eye Candy. A little bit of gold. All right, so I'm guessing I should probably get a move on here. I don't know what temperature we're at, but. Uh, the resin that I'm using is Illumilite Clear Slow. That's what I typically use for most things. Um, if I'm doing color swirl or it's something where I got to wait till the end of the, the working time, you know, like glitters, um, stuff like that, then it's definitely going to be Illumilite Clear Slow almost every time. Because I just am not patient enough to wait 40 minutes to, to pour or, you know, whatever. Um, if I'm doing clear... A lot of times I'll use, uh, if it's, if all, if the resin is just a clear pour, a lot of times I'm going to use the Amazing Clearcast Plus. I really like that stuff. It turns very well and it's got the UV inhibitors in it. Um, so that's a good choice if you're going for dead clear. Uh, and I use that for anything that, um, what else do I use that for? Like a single color. Anytime also, anytime I'm, I'm casting something kind of smooth where I'm a little worried about the um, the bond between the resin and, and wood or something like that. Like, like certain burls that are super smooth. I'm going to go with Amazing Clear Cast. Gummy bears on ice cream. It's good. They get hard though. They, they get really hard. So we need a color, Curtis. I gotta check the temperature because I might have to just go with anything that yeah, we gotta I gotta I gotta pull something out. Let's go with um let's go with fuchsia pink. That'll be fun. I'm just gonna dump a lot in there. We gotta get a move on. It's thickening, it's warming up. Sorry, Curtis, next time, bud. There's a delay. When I say something, there's always a delay. So I don't have 30 seconds necessarily. Okay, so here's the fuchsia pink. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's a pretty good color, huh? Hopefully you like it. All right, so let's just pour them. Go for it. Let's do it. Oh, I guess I'm not necessarily right on camera. That's a little better. Okay. Here's that. Uh, me metallic flake. That'll be kind of interesting. Okay, and a little bit of fuchsia pink. That really ties everything together, don't you think? Okay, round two. Okay, blue flake. Metallic blue. And a little bit more fuchsia pink. Oh man, these are going to be pretty wicked, I think. Check that out. What do you think of that? Wait. Okay, so you can see down in the bottom corner there. 
get our lid off and we just pop this guy also in the oven, or not the oven, the, um, the pressure pot. Uh, and for anybody that's kind of new to casting, doesn't really get what's the deal with the pressure pots, the only thing that this thing is doing is collapsing air bubbles. That's all it's doing. It has nothing to do with curing it faster or better or any of that kind of stuff. It's just literally getting rid of bubbles. The, the pressure collapses a bubble, an air bubble, to a kind of microscopic size. And so uh, we're going to go up to 70 PSI. I would say minimum for resin to get rid of the bubbles is probably around 40 to 45. I recommend getting a pressure pot and just going to 50. I think that's a better way to go. That'll give you a little bit of room just in case there's some leaks in the pot, which tends to happen. Um, but like I said, 40, 45 is the minimum. Um, I go to 70 in mine because they can go to 80 and that gives me even more room to not have to worry about anything. I don't really think there's a big difference between 70 and 50. Um, I don't think that, you know, there's like the bubbles are smaller or anything like that. Um, 50 is plenty. It's more just I can and it gives me more room just in case it springs a little bit more of a leak than I think. Um, but you don't want to go over the max PSI in your pot. Otherwise, you could run into some serious problems. Pressure pots can explode if they fail. You know, um, they don't, as long as you're staying within the, the safety stuff. So make sure to read and, and don't go over whatever your pressure pot says. It should have a sticker on there or on the instructions somewhere. Um, don't go over the max PSI and you sh you'll be fine. So there we have it. So again, um, that, that wood was sent down by Braxton Worthlin. Um, I definitely go check his channel out. Unfortunately, he passed last week and it was tragic. He was way too young. Um, but yeah, hopefully maybe a few more views on his channel. Where, where am I? I'm going to figure out which tab I needed to go to. Um, you know, I'm sure it would probably help the family out. Um, and then there's also a GoFundMe. If you want to uh, donate a little bit, we'll put a, a link to that. And I'll put, I'll get these links. They're not in the show notes yet, but they're in the chat. Um, and uh, is there anything else? I think that was it for, for like all the links and stuff. Um, so is there anything else going on? I don't think so. I can't think of anything offhand. Let me stop real quick. Uh, if anybody has any questions or anything like that, um, I'll, I'll spend a couple minutes here and, and try and knock out a couple questions. And after that, I got to get, get going because I got to get the shop cleaned up. And I actually have company coming over to the shop today. So I do have to get going after that. But we'll, we'll, if anybody has any burning questions, I'll try and knock them out here in the, in the chat. Let's see here. More ice cream talk. <laughs> Sorry I didn't get your color, Curtis. I don't have any of that, that. I only had a couple of those, those uh, metallic flakes. Just to let people know, I have peacock, I think it's called. It's like a greenish teal. It's like a teal one. I got purple for the, remember I was saying the FedEx blanks. I have a red, I have blue, and that's it. Oh, and I have like a, a terrible, ugly green chartreuse something. Is that what they call it? Lime truce. <laughs> Like, a, I guess I could have maybe used this. It's, it's more like a lime. I think it's kind of ugly and I don't think it's, I don't know. Maybe it would look good. Maybe I shouldn't. I didn't know I had that though. Oh yeah, Patreon. Oh man, so Patreon is going to be fun this, this month. Um, we got the Patreon, patron hangout for anybody that's a patron <laughs> on Friday. First Friday of the month on Patreon, we do a, a live stream hangout. Uh, where, we, you know, kind of the same thing. We do like a little bit of a demo, which is kind of like what I just did here. Um, something hopefully different, you know. Uh, and then the second half is for Q&A, for questions for, for patrons. And it's it's a smaller crowd, and I focus totally on, like, for that Q&A hangout part. I'm That's all I'm doing is hanging out and, and looking at the chat. Um, so it's pretty fun. We, we do that. We get together every month. This month is going to be fun, and we'll have to just see how this goes. I got slime, guys. Slime. I don't know how this is going to turn out. Ooh, ooh, we're going to cast slime. Oh, it's touching me. Oh, it touched me. 
So I was walking, we were walking through Hobby Lobby. Gretchen had to get something at Hobby Lobby. And we were just kind of, I always like to look around at stuff. And so they had this, this thing of, of uh, slime and like Halloween colors. So there's like lime green, purple, red, and black slime. So I thought, why don't we try casting some slime and see how that goes? <laughs> so it should be pretty fun. Uh, those, those end up on, on, like I said, the first Friday. Those are at 3 p.m. Pacific time as well. So um, if you'd like to get access to those and help support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash nvwoodworks. Um, so I'll, I'll get a link actually to that too. Um, there's always a link to those in the, the descriptions of all the videos too. Um, but yeah, it's, so you can you can help the show out and, and get access to those. What the heck is this? I want to go to my thing. There we go. Get me a link. Put that down there. Um, so anyway, like I said, you can head over there uh, and sign up, and everybody gets access. That's a patron. Um, there's a link that that takes you to the stream, and then we'll we do a demo, and then Q and A, and hang out, and it's kind of fun. So. Anyway, I can't wait for that. So that's happening on Friday. Um, and I think, so I think that's all of the news and, and updates. Uh, let's see here. So let me, let me just, uh... okay, so sweet. Thanks for, for reminding me, Gene. And actually uh, for Gene and, and everybody else that was um, gonna be helping out with the, the uh, mystery box things, um, I was going to have to, I was going to wait until I got my new bank account set up for my new business, like kind of entity. Um, but I think what I, I think I can do it. I need to double check, but I think that I can get everything set up so we can do these testing things with something else. So, um, be looking for that. I'll email you guys, um, when that's ready to go. It should be kind of soon to kind of test things out though. So I just wanted to kind of give you, I know that I keep kind of <laughs> dangling it in front of your face. It should be coming soon for the for the testing part uh, anyway. So I just wanted to let you know about that. Well, thanks, Daryl. I'm glad that you and, are, are learning stuff and, and having fun with it. That's the whole point. I, I like to, to share stuff. I was actually just talking to um, one of the things that, you know, I have a new website that I'm setting up and, and it'll be launching probably in November. And, uh, and I'm redoing a lot of stuff. So for anybody that's kind of didn't hear last week, I'm, I'm going to be rebranding. I've been wanting to do this for a long time. So brand new website. Most things are not going to change. It's going to be the same old, same old. Um, hopefully a couple of upgrades here and there, uh, slight changes, but I mean, I'm not, you know, we're, we're doing the, the hangouts, patron, you know, all that kind of stuff, videos, and I'm still selling the same products and all that stuff. So no big changes are coming, but um, one of the things that I wanted to do was update my about page on my website. And so uh, I was talking to uh, my assistant and we were like, you know, I don't know. It's just, it's just interesting stuff, like talking about like where where things kind of came from. And, and, and on that about page, you know, we were talking about like the resin casting, how I got into it. And, and with YouTube, when I got into resin casting, there was like no information. No, everybody that did it was like, I ain't telling you anything. And so I'm, I'm happy to see today, uh, it's a totally different story. You can learn all kinds of stuff, but that's kind of the fun thing. I, I, I was so interested in, I had so much fun with the casting that I'm like, other people need to know about this. Well, I'm, I'm happy to share. All right, so let's see here. Yeah, the, the <laughs> Frank. Yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see if, if these, uh, these uh, um, slime blanks, if, if we can get anything to even work. Uh, but it'll be fun trying. We may, you know, something that's like really weird, like slime. Um, we may get some really weird reactions or, or something that we like would never have even thought of. Um, an effect or something like that that may be useful, even if it doesn't work for like a turning blank. It may be useful for something else. So it's always good to experiment. All right. So let's see here. Shoo. Well, thank you for coming, Shu. You kind of made it to the end, unfortunately. <laughs> but anyway, all right, so I think that is about it. I didn't really see any questions or anything like that. Um, so next, so again, for patrons, Friday, this Friday is the, the first Friday hangout at 3 p.m. Pacific time. And then next live stream, which is regular live stream, is gonna be on Wednesday as usual at 3 p.m. Pacific time. And we'll have a, a new batch of something that we, we play with and experiment with. 
and it should be pretty fun. So anyway, uh, no video this week. Um, I'm, I'm trying to get, uh, there's, there's all these things going on. Like, do you ever have these like months where like you just can't get uh, on top of anything? <laughs> that's, that's my month right now. So um, I do have some good video ideas coming up down, you know, pretty soon here. So be looking, but not this weekend. So Wednesday next week, we'll be back for the live stream. So anyway, guys, I appreciate you guys all coming out. Thank you to all the super chatters who got in there, supported the show, got some cool colors. I, I always love seeing what you guys pick because, you know, I could kind of play with colors and, and pick whatever, but I, you know, I would do things a certain way and a lot of times I wouldn't pick certain combinations. So I really appreciate you guys picking really cool colors and getting neat combinations in these things. It, it's a good way to experiment. That's the whole point. So anyway, guys, I hope you have a great evening tonight. I will see you guys on the next stream Wednesday, 3 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. And I hope you have a great weekend and get in the shop and make something cool. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye.